Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today I'm going to be talking to you a bit about glazes. Yes, we all want to know about glazes and I'm going to share a little bit of what I know with you. So I'm going to show you how you take a glaze recipe and turn it into something you can actually use to mix your glaze from. You know, a lot of people don't make their own glazes and they may want to do it and I'm just going to give you an easy way to like dip your toes in the pool of glaze. This is not a glaze chemistry it, it video, no, not at all, and it's not going to be talking about all the different chemicals and everything in it, talking about, you know, glass formers and fluxes and all that. I'm not going to get into that in this. This is just for someone who has seen a glaze somewhere, loved it, and wants to try it, but doesn't know what to do with the recipe once they have it. So take that. If you are someone who glazes are your thing and you love glazes and you watch this video and you're like, what? She didn't talk about all this stuff? Well, that's not what this is for. If you want to find that, you know, I'm sure somebody else is doing it and maybe eventually I'll do a video about that. But I want to keep this simple and make it easy for people to approach. So, here's where we start. You have your glaze recipe. Oh, so this is for a ton glaze that I have. You can see it says cone 5. It can go to cone 6 because I've done it that high. It does melt a little more, but it's not a bad thing. And the ox means oxidation. And you'll see that when you're looking at glazes. You'll have the title of the glaze, which is usually the type of glaze it is or the color of the glaze. And then you'll see the cone, that's the temperature it fires to. And then you'll see ox or red. Oxidation is an oxidation firing that should be safe for your electric kilns. Reduction is reduction firing, like doing gas or wood firing. So that's really a good way to know whether you can use a glaze or not. If it says safe, safe for oxidation firing, it's for you. You can use that. All right, so this is a Chun glaze that I've been using for about 12 years now. I believe it's based on a John Brick glaze. I didn't know that when I found this glaze. I kind of thought, you know, that I found something magical, but no, he, he's awesome and he knows just about everything about glazes, so I bow to him. So this glaze is really nice. It's beautiful. Actually, I can show you what it looks like right here. I, bam! <laughs> So this is the Chun Blue on top and on the bottom. There's a clear and other stuff happening. And if you look inside, you can see that Chun Blue. Oh, it's so nice on porcelain. So blue, as blue as the summer sky after a rainstorm. Or at least that's what the ancient Chinese called Chun back during the Song Dynasty. That's how they described this color blue. Mine is more like a robin's egg blue. It's not completely transparent. It's semi-opaque, but still gorgeous glaze. It's actually my favorite one that I make. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about it. All right, so you get your glaze recipe and you have your ingredients like G200, that's a feldspar, whiting, calcium carbonate, that's basically seashells all ground up. You get some zinc oxide, zinc, OM4, that's a ball clay, so it's a type of clay, silica, silica is glass in powder form, ground up sand, that's silica, and then, I didn't write on here yet, copper carbonate. And that's what gives us the color. And copper carbonate is just a mineral that we find in the earth. All right, so what do you do with this when you have it? I mean, it's all well and good. But what does this mean? And how do you make a glaze from it? Well, 38 would be grams. So always think of grams. So 38 grams of G200, just like baking, right? This is your recipe. 14 grams of whiting, 12 grams of zinc oxide, 6 grams of OM4, 30 grams of silica. I'm gonna put my copper on here and then copper carb. There's copper carbonate and copper oxide. There's two separate types of copper. And then there's black copper and there's all this stuff out there. But I'm talking about copper carbonate, 0.5. Don't mind this point. This point was the end of abbreviating carbonate. So that's 0.5. All right, so these added up should equal 100, which they do because I checked my numbers. So you draw a line, 100, carry the one. No, just kidding, I'm not carrying ones. All right, so this adds up to 100. Yay, that's important. You want your glaze base recipe to add up to 100. That means you have a good recipe, all set. You shouldn't really have any problems with it. Not gonna get into all the other things that can come into it. Just start with, if it's 100, you're good. It's like acing an exam, you want 100. 
So 0.5, your color additive always goes after the 100. So you don't count this 0.5 in that 100. Or if whatever else you're putting in for colorant, if you're putting in 20 grams or whatever, just don't count that in your 100. All right, so we have this now. What are we gonna do? Well, you can mix up this batch and have a 100 gram batch and do it as a test, which I do recommend when you're first mixing the glaze. You should always test it. But testing glazes only gives you like a little red solo cup worth of glaze. There's not really enough to do anything except get yourself into trouble with. So you need to make some more and you have to decide how much. Well, glaze materials are expensive, so be sure you test and you love the glaze. And then when you're ready to commit, you need to figure out how much you're gonna make. Now, I always make mine in five gallon buckets, which you see right here. This is actually my glaze of my chun bucket right there, and I'm gonna be making more in a little while, which I'll do another video on here for you guys. So, to make a five gallon bucket of glaze, that is a 10,000 gram batch of material. Conveniently enough, we have a 100 gram batch. To get to 10,000, we just add two zeros. And we can all add two zeros, right? That's super easy. So, just take your recipe and go back through it and add zero, 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 not this one because that was just our making sure it was 100. And then move your decimal point two places, one, two, so it's actually 50, right? So there's my recipe. I know all the things that I'm gonna need to put in there. Say that you don't wanna make a full five gallon batch, you just wanna make a two and a half gallon batch. Cut it in half, the whole recipe. Go right down through it, do your math, divide everything by two. You wanna make a quarter batch, divide it by four. Simple, really simple. Don't do more than, don't go less than a quarter of a batch because then you're getting down into glaze testing area and there's just no point in going through the effort of measuring all these ingredients out, mixing, mixing up a glaze and only having a tiny bit. I suggest you do a half batch or do the full batch. That's what I do. That way you only make glaze like twice a year for each color. It's just much better that way. All right, so this great glaze, you're welcome to use it, try it. It's pretty forgiving. It looks great on almost every clay body I've put it on. It is a cone five to six glaze, just not low fire, so make sure you don't put it on earthenware because I don't know what would happen then. All right, so there's that. Now the last thing before I go in this video is I wanna share a really good book. When I was first learning to do electric firing, um, I didn't know anything about cone six glazes. I knew a lot about cone nine, 10 glazes, nothing about cone six glazes. And this book came out around that time. And I picked up a copy. I don't know if it's still in print, but I know you can find it secondhand. It's an absolutely wonderful glaze book. It talks a bit about glazes, so you can actually learn more about why glazes do what they do and why you get different finishes and effects in those glazes. It also has a really good section on safety, not just studio safety for yourself, but glaze safety for the people using your glaze down the line, which is really important if you're gonna make functional wear. You gotta think about the people drinking out of the cup, not just how beautiful the glaze looks on the cup. I know, we have to. All right, so I marked a glaze that I absolutely love in here. Goss, gloss, goss, no, that would be glossy. Face glaze one and it is sweet, it's beautiful. Looks good on red clays, looks good on porcelain, looks good on a buff stoneware. So this is another really nice glaze. Here it is close up. If you don't own the book, now you can screenshot it, pause it right there, get this recipe, bam. And then you can add some stuff to it. It doesn't have any, um, well it has suggestions if you get the book, but on here, you know, just add a little bit of copper, maybe add a little rutile, maybe add a little, cobalt try some things out boom so there's that so that's mastering cone six glazes by john hesselbeth and ron roy they're amazing all right so that's all i really have today to share with you about understanding recipes understanding glaze recipes because i know it can be confusing and i'm going to come right back and do uh mixing a glaze I'm gonna make this glaze as a matter of fact. So in my next video, you'll get to watch me go outside and freeze in the like 12 degree temperature here in Vermont that it is the reason I'm dressed the way I am. All right guys, I wanna thank you so much for hanging with me here in the studio. As always, I love to hear your feedback and any suggestions you might have, please leave them below in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to me yet, go ahead. It's right down there, you can do it, it's easy. Just click a button and you can subscribe and be sure to turn notifications on. That way you know when I have a new video up. 
And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. All right, take care, and I'll see you next time in the studio.